Hi there, welcome back. So today I've got a very, very short video for you and I'm going to go into the difference between blob storage and data lake storage. Uh, so one of the main differences is folders. Uh, so we're going to discuss when a folder is a folder, when a folder is not a folder and what that actually means when you're running uh, these kind of big data multiprocessing jobs, uh, how that could impact you f uh, in terms of cost and that kind of thing. So hopefully you enjoy. Uh, if you do, please hit that subscribe button down below as usual and uh, thanks very much for watching. So you may have seen this uh, dialogue in Azure Storage Explorer when you've been trying to create a new folder. Uh, and when you do that in a blob account uh, within a container, it, it just pops up this warning saying, this will create a virtual folder. A virtual folder does not actually exist in Azure until you paste, drag, or upload blobs into it. To paste the blob into a virtual folder, copy the blob before creating the folder. Um, and this is effectively telling you that there is no support for folders in blob storage. It's not saying it explicitly enough to kind of get across what's happening. Um, but it, what actually happens is when you create a virtual folder and then put things into it, um, all, all the interface is doing is then just renaming the blobs that you're copying in and uh, prepending the, the folder name that you've put on there. Um, so when you um, create those blobs, it will just rename them. When you delete the blobs, uh, effectively the folder remains until the last blob is deleted and then the folder is gone. It's, it's not an actual thing on the file system. Uh, there's no record of it anywhere other than um, in this tool, the, the Storage Explorer, it knows about it locally and it knows you're intending to use it. But if you never put any blobs into it and then you went up into the um, Azure portal, you would not see that folder there because there's nothing in there um, and, and the folder is not an actual object on the, on the file system. So here I've set up two uh, text files. These are obviously not um, blob storage. They're not data lake. Um, this is just here to show you how this works, what's actually going to be going on behind the scenes when you are uh, kind of working with these things. Um, and then we'll talk about what the, the kind of effect of that is. So over here on the left, we have got uh, blob store. And blob store looks like it supports folders. You you can absolutely put a what looks like a folder name in. You can have uh, the the forward slash in there. And when you're looking in uh, Storage Explorer or things like that, then you will be able to browse by folder. Uh, it will show you the hierarchical uh, view of this, but it's not hierarchical behind the scenes, and that, that's very important. On the other side, we've got uh, Data Lake Store, and that does support actual hierarchies, and, uh, and and that has some very real consequences. So let's say that we have copied these nine files into our Blob Store, and we want to rename that folder. So this could be an operation uh, when you're running um, some kind of big data job where the output is kind of cached into a temporary folder, and then at the end of the job, you might rename that folder uh, to the final destination rather than copying those uh, those files out. So th this is pretty important. Um, so I want to change old folder to new folder. So I'm going to rename it and select new folder. And I'm going to speed this up by copying and pasting. So I'm going to do this and I have to do every single file and it takes forever. So you can see how long that's taking me. Obviously a computer is doing this quicker um, because it's not having to select stuff and paste it. But the point here is that I had to do it to every single file. And behind the scenes, uh, the, the storage engine does have to do this for every single file when you're working with blob storage because it doesn't support hierarchies. Um, and then over on the data lake side, I just do that and all of the files are now in a different folder. So the file operation was actually done on the file table behind the scenes rather than against each individual file. Now, the reason that this is important is uh, for these nine files that took, what, 10 seconds, something like that for the blob and one second, let's say, for the data lake. Um, in real life, uh, you wouldn't have nine files. You could have a billion files uh, and each one of those is going to take 20 milliseconds and that's going to add up to quite a lot of time. Now, why is this important, you may ask? 
it's just blob storage. It's not very expensive. Uh, that That's not really a, a big consideration to me. Uh, even storing those files is not going to cost me very much, and the cost difference between these two is, is fairly small. Well, that may be true, but just remember that you could have a 20-node cluster that is changing the names of these files. You could have a 60-node a cluster running with very large machines that's costing you $10,000 an hour uh, to run and do that processing. So your job itself could take one hour, uh, and let's say that it is taking $10,000 an hour to, to keep that cluster up and running. So that will cost you $10,000 to process your data. If you are using Data Lake Store and at the end of the job you rename the folder, uh, that will take approximately 20 milliseconds to complete the folder rename. So it's not going to cost you any more money, possibly one or two cents. If you were using Blob Storage, it could take an hour to, to rename all of the files within that folder. Uh, and that's going to add $10,000 to the cost of your processing because you've got this huge cluster that's just sitting there renaming files. And that's not a very efficient use of, of time. It's not a very efficient use of money. Um, and that's why it's important to, to understand the difference between these things. So now I'm going to do the next uh, kind of demonstration for you. Um, so we've just done a rename and shown that that took a lot of time on the blob storage. So now what we're going to do is a delete operation. And you may have found this in the interface where in blob storage, you're not able to just right click on a folder and delete it um, because that folder doesn't exist. So in data lake store, we do a single operation. We just delete the folder. All of the files are gone. In blob storage, we actually have to hit each file individually to delete them. And this can be time consuming. It can also mean that you have to write some fairly complicated scripting uh, to take care of this because you are deleting one at a time. So you personally have to iterate through the um, through the files in st some instances and run them into a delete command. Um, so again, this is exactly the same uh, concept as before. You have a large cluster that's running. It's manually deleting individual files and that could take a lot longer. And therefore, um, you know, that's going to add to your costs and the length of your jobs. So if you've got people that are waiting on this data, um, one of them is going to take significantly longer to finish those jobs. That means that the data arrives later. If you've then got um, three or four steps in your data pipeline, uh, you're taking raw data, you're cleaning it up, writing it to disk, you're then taking that data and you're uh, integrating it with other data and then you're creating a model. Um, each step of that could add extra time just because you're doing this extra processing. Um, that's not to say that data lake store is the correct answer every single time. Obviously it's not, otherwise blob wouldn't exist. Um, so just make sure that you're aware of the, uh, the trade-offs between the two of these, um, and make sure that you're using the right one for the, for the thing that you're doing at the time. So hopefully you found that interesting and learned a bit about the difference between blob and, um, data lake store and the difference between what is a folder, what isn't a folder within this system and how that's going to affect your, your kind of costs. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe below, check out the other videos on the channel and obviously the, uh, the GitHub repository, smash that like button and I will see you next time. Thanks very much.